on my way back to Denver. I only planned to stay overnight in the town of Spring Oak. But I'd been there three days now. Not that I had any business in the sleepy village. Just pleasure in the form of Miss Peggy Callahan. But it was time to move on. Peggy and I had said out goodbyes the night before. But I figured one last goodbye in the morning wouldn't hurt. Hello, beautiful. Slade. You decided to stay over. No, but I just had to have another look at you. And another goodbye? Hey, you know, your boss might not like this. Never mind my boss. The point is, do you like it? Now, what do you think? And why are you leaving? Put your hands up! Don't turn around, mister! Keep an eye on outside. It's a lot of trouble now. Uh, start getting that money together. Open it. Might have been killed. I couldn't see that happen. Forget about it, Peg. Mr. Slade? Yes, sir. Oh, this is Mr. Batson. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Well, I'm sorry I wasn't too much help here this afternoon. Well, I know what happened, and I think Peggy did the right thing. There's no need for you to gamble with your life. Did they get away? One of them's dead, and the other one got away. Unfortunately, he's the one who had the money. Well, where's the sheriff? Took after him with a posse. Let's hope that he catches up with him. Yeah, let's hope so. Well, I'll see you later, Slugger. Peggy, help us check through this vault, will you? Yes, sir. And when we got to Rocky Flats, we lost the trail. He could have gone any of a hundred ways. Just how much money to get away with, Bob? $75,000. Well, I've alerted every marshal and sheriff in the area. Too bad that one had to die. He might have given us a lead. Uh, but the one that got away, did either of you get a look at his face? No, I couldn't even tell you how he was dressed. No, Peggy got the best look, and like she said, he wore a mask. Nothing I can add. He could have been any age from 18 to 45. Well, that narrows it down to nothing. Well, you do your best, Sheriff. Slade, I've never had much truck with the detectives, but from what I heard about you, I'm a little surprised that you'd let a woman lay you out cold. <laughs> yeah, well, so am I, Sheriff. I'm a little dry from the trail. You want, want to join me in a drink? We'll be delighted. Figuring on leaving town today? Well, I was just waiting for an excuse to stay over. Now I got a good one. Oh, Peggy? Peggy. Hmm. I can't say that I'm hopeful of turning up anything. It ain't likely to stick around these parts. No, maybe not. But nobody ever held up a bag that smoothly without knowing something about it ahead of time. That timing was almost perfect. I was their only surprise. And Peggy sure took good care of that. You mean you think that Peggy? Oh, I'm not saying that, Sheriff. I just meant that I might be still around town. Oh, it's my hunch. He's many a mile from here by now. Man in a hurry with lots of money can cover a lot of ground. Yeah. Well, Slade, I gotta go. Me and a few of the boys will be trying to pick up that trail again tomorrow. You're welcome to ride with us. Thanks, Sheriff. I will. All right, on your way. This ain't no hotel. Hey, do you always handle your customers that rough? I'll run this place. Boy, he's drinking, he'll be found dead on the floor. 
Can't you take it a little easy, mister? Thanks, thanks. I'll be moving along. Go on, mister, before you drink yourself to death. Go on, get out of here. Sure, I'm going, I'm going. Mister, I got something you ought to hear about what you and the sheriff were talking. I told you to get out of here. Now, get now, out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here, buddy. I'll be glad to talk to you. Here, sit down. Hey, could... Would it, would it be all right if I had a double whiskey? Don't you think you've had enough, pal? Oh, mister, I need a drink bad. All right, give him a drink. Now, uh, you said there was something you wanted to tell me? Yeah. I wasn't really asleep over there. I could hear everything you and the sheriff said. So? I think I may know something about the man you're looking for. Hey, who are you? That'll be four bits. Here. To answer your question, my name is Gates. Eli Gates. And I just got into town a couple hours ago. Mighty dry. I can see that. Hey, bartender, let's have a bottle, please. Well, thanks. I don't feel too well. I can understand why, too. Sure, I don't make any secret of it. That'll be a... Here, this will cover it. Now, uh, Mr. Gates. You said that you knew something? Y yeah, about the bank robbery. I was in Crescent City all last week. That's where I just come from. Go ahead. And, and I was sitting in a bar next to a table with three other men. Just like I was sitting next to you and the sheriff here. Only I had a little money then and I was drinking. And I heard them talking about the Spring Oak Bank. You say there were three men? Yeah, oh, that's right. They said it would be easy. I didn't know what they meant at the time. They could have been talking about a loan. But I saw the man that was shot this morning, and he was one of them. Are you sure there were three of them? Uh-huh, that's right. Well, did you get a good look at them? I mean, could you give me a good description of them? No, sir, I'm sorry. I'm not much good at describing anything in words. Anything I could say would fit 50 men. Was there anything about them that could help you describe them, identify them? Oh, I can identify them all right, all right. Yeah, well, how? You can't describe them. Pictures, that's how. Pictures? You mean you got a picture of them in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you were nice to me, Joey. I'll be nice to you. You never heard of me, did you? No. Well, back in New York 15 years ago, I was the most up-and-coming young artist around. Great talent, great future, everybody said. Oh, I see, I see. Now, uh, well, now, just supposing you just go ahead and draw me a picture of those other two men, Mr. Gates, huh? Well, sure, sure, I'll do it for you. Great talent, great future, that's what they said. Then I fell in love. Uh-huh, I see. Then I fell in love, but not with a woman. With a bottle. This. Well, that's happened to a lot of good men before you, but, uh... It's never too late to quit, Mr. Gates. Now, uh, get on with the picture, huh? Yeah, sure, sure. I wandered on out west when things got a little rough around New York, and now I go from town to town doing mostly baby pictures. Well, I'm sure it meant a lot to the folk you'd done them for. That's something anyway. You ever see a baby picture in a museum? Sure, many times. Wearing daddy's cowboy hat? <laughs> That's what comes from falling in love with a bottle. There. That's one of them. Well, that's just fine, Mr. Gates. Just fine. I could spot this man anywhere with this. Now, look, how about that other one, huh? Sure, sure. You know what else I do. I paint signs. 
Fat cattle auction, Saturday, 10 o'clock. Or maybe sometimes on a window. Fresh calico shipment just arrived. Great future. Great talent. And he sure can draw, there's no doubt about that. Never saw anything better. Thanks. You know you'd have made a great critic. Yeah, sure. Well, Mr. Gates, how about that other picture, huh? Come on. Sure, sure. For a critic like you, anything. I don't feel good. Oh. Mr. Gates. Hey, come on, Mr. Gates. Hello, Mr. Slade. Gates. You having a little trouble? Yes, I am. I've got a very valuable friend here, but he seems to have left me for a while. What's this? Oh. That, Mr. Batson, is a drawing of one of the men who held up your bank. What? Seems that my sick friend here was over in Crescent City. He overheard three men talking about that bank job before it happened. And he's positive that the dead outlaw was one of them. Well, that's wonderful. But he said there were three men? Well, he's pretty drunk. He could be wrong. But I don't think so. Well, maybe the third man helped in the getaway. It went pretty smoothly. What are you going to do with him? I think the best bet is to have the sheriff lock him up for safekeeping. Hope for that other drawing when he sobers up. Here, grab my gun, will you? Here's his hat. All right. Here we go, Mr. Gates. Uh, oh, uh, bartender. Yeah. Bring his drawing stuff over to the jailhouse, will you? Yeah. Straight whiskey. Well, can't you give us any idea when he'll come to? Could be two hours, could be 15 hours. But he's going to feel mighty rough. Delirium tremens. If I was you, Sheriff, I'd have somebody standing by with a bottle. He wake up with them tremens, he could have a convulsion if he don't get a drink. All right, I'll watch him myself. I don't mind playing nursemaid to a drunk if it'll help solve the bank robbery. When he does come to, Sheriff, get him to draw that other picture. Mind if I do a little leg work for you? Crescent City? That's right. I might get somebody to identify this picture by showing it around. That's a good idea. Go ahead, Slade. Let me know how things work out, Sheriff. I'll let you know. You're a man who gets things done, Mr. Slade. I try, Mr. Batson. Good luck in Crescent City. for another week. We're in trouble. A million to one chance, and this had to happen. First Sam gets killed, and now this. Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Some drunken artist saw us together here in town last week. He heard us planning the whole thing. Now he's got us tied into the holdup. Well, how? 
He drew a picture of you for Shotgun Slade. Slade? Well, how does he figure in on this? He's the one that the girl knocked out of the bank this morning. Oh. So that was the famous Shotgun Slade, huh? Yeah, he's on his way here now. He'll be showing that picture around. It won't take him too long to pin you down. Now, if I get out of town, he won't. No, that's no way to handle it. He's not going to stop with Crescent City. He'll keep on following you. Sooner or later, he's going to pin you down. You've got to kill him. Yeah. yeah. What I heard about that uh, Slade, that might not be so easy. Well, he'll be riding into town a short while right down the street there. It'd make an easy rifle shot. Yeah. How come that artist didn't draw your picture, too? Well, that's the one break we've had, or I wouldn't even be here to warn you. He's a drunk. He passed out cold after drawing your picture. They've got him under guard in the jail. What happens when he comes to? Don't worry. You take care of Slade. I'll figure out a way to keep our drunken friend quiet for good. Just make sure you get him with the first shot. You might not have a second. Gates had overheard those three men. I was betting that someone else would remember the man in the picture. I was in luck. The bartender had no trouble at all recognizing him from the drawing. His name was Hack Lawrence. He'd been around town for some time. The bartender told me where I could find him. easier for you if you talk. I'm through talking. So is that artist friend of yours. Forever. Right now. We'll try. Slade. Doc. How's Gates? He all right? Not a peep out of him. No trouble, huh? No. I've been watching him like a mother hen. How about you? Did you find out anything in Crescent City? Yeah. His name was Hack Lawrence. Was? That's right. He's dead. And there's no question about there being a third man in the deal. Lawrence knew who I was, and he was waiting to greet me with a rifle bullet. Did you get the money? No. Number three must have it. Anybody show up here? Just Batson. Wanted to know if I'd heard from you. Well, what do we do now? Well, I've got to see that other sketch. Look, Doc. Can't you give him some smelling salts or something? I've got to get him on his feet. I'll try. What's that? Storeroom. And the back door is bolted. Uh-huh. Well, Doc, she's still pretty wobbly. 
Can't you bring him around just for a few minutes? I don't know how much good he'd be if I could. I'm afraid the only medicine is going to have to be time. Better give him a few more hours. Well, unfortunately, Doc, we don't have a few more hours. Now, if you'll excuse me, please, I'd like to talk to Sheriff Aldo alone for a minute. Sorry, I couldn't help. Uh, thanks anyway, Doc. Look, Sheriff. Gates is a threat to number three. And I've got a hunch he's right here in Spring Oak. And they'll try to stop Gates from ever coming to again. Well, he'd have a tough time with us here. That's just it, Sheriff. Supposing nobody was here. You mean, leave this place unguarded, let him try something, and then catch him in the act? No. No, no, he's too smart for that. Catch on. And he's just smart enough to try to figure some dodge to get us away from here at the right time. I'm gonna hunch it's gonna happen real quick. Gates is liable to come to any minute. He can't afford to waste time. Yeah, you're right. town down just to save your own neck. I don't know what you mean. All that. Just to fire a couple of bullets into some pillows and a blanket. That's right. We moved Gates. You're under arrest, Batson. What for? You've got nothing to hold me for. Those shots harm no one, and that's all you've got. Drop that gun. Hey, Mr. Slade, I need a drink. Sheriff, where's the bottle? Hey, that's the other one. Hey, Drew, you're a pretty good picture, didn't I? Took you no time at all to bring him in. That's right, Gates. Sheriff, how much is the reward money? I, I feel like I just crossed the Mojave Desert. We'll get you some, Gates. Well, maybe the doc will have a little more luck with this one. At least you can treat a bullet wound. Let's go pay him a visit. How about that dream, Sheriff? Just to celebrate? We'll celebrate. It's a we'll victory. We'll celebrate. And you really got all the money back for the bank? That's right. Well, Mr. Batson, what's going to happen to him? Oh, nothing for about 20 years. Shall we? Why not? Oh, Mr. Slade, there you are, partner. I've been putting that money you loaned me to good use. Well, that's just fine, Mr. Gates. We'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Oh, no siree, Bob. No friend of mine goes out of here without a drink on me. Bartender! Head him up and keep him coming. Look, Gates, we got a little fun. Yes, siree, Bob. We might liable to be here all night. Make mine a double. 